Okay, so right, so we're going to have a look at some graph modeling. Um, so if I go on to the next, right, so I thought it'd be quite interesting. So, so a lot of a lot of the, uh, the times when we do graph modeling talks, we kind of collect a bunch of tips. So I thought it'd be quite interesting for a bit of a change to actually drive through how would you uh, how would you actually go about uh, modeling uh, on an actual problem from start to finish. Um, and so the data set I thought uh, we're going to do that with uh, is the meetup one. Uh, so hopefully you're reasonably familiar with that. So there's a, a website called meetup.com and a lot of the uh, tech and uh, other meetups in San Francisco, London, certainly other cities uh, will uh, organize uh, their events uh, on there. And it's quite a nice data set because uh, it, lets us do a, it lets us do a bit of recommendation work as well, which Neva J works pretty well for. So this is an example of some of the uh, the recommendations or what will become uh, queries uh, that Meetup do uh, on their website and via their email. So uh, you can make out some of the types of data that they have. So you can see on the left-hand side, uh, you can see they mention people uh, and the types of Meetups they're in. And then uh, they give you a list of people who are going to Meetups. So there's some concept of, of, of attendance or people RSVPing uh, to events. Uh, and then they make suggestions for groups uh, on the right-hand side. Uh, so we're going to have a look at maybe we, how we could uh, do some of that and perhaps hopefully do uh, do something a little bit better as well uh, using the FJ. Uh, right, so let's get started. Um, so just a quick summary of what was on there. So there were there were kind of three three different types of uh, recommendations that we can make. Um, so there's three kind of main uh, main areas that we can uh, make recommendations for. So we've got uh, potential groups uh, that you can join. So for example, the, there's a Neo4j user group. Uh, in lots of different cities, uh, there could be topics that you could follow, and, they, and, and uh, people can say they have an interest in their topics. So for example, you could be interested in EFJ, or you could be interested in Java, uh, or you could be interested in NoSQL, and each of those would be a topic. Uh, and a group can say uh, that it has a topic, uh, and people can also say that they're interested in them. Uh, and then finally, and this is where we'll spend the most of the time, uh, there are events that get hosted. And for example, in London, there are there are often uh, six or seven every day. Um, and you have, to ch you have to try and work out which one of these many events uh, do I want to attend. Uh, and across the, the whole of this talk, we're going to be looking from the perspective of uh, a user of Meetup who wants to go uh, to an event. Uh, so you can equally actually uh, write a talk uh, where you did it the other way around and did it from the perspective of the organizer, but I think it's more interesting to go from the perspective of the user. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's get started. So I've got, I've got a bit of a, a key. Uh, for you to, to follow this talk. So I've got uh, four symbols that you can see here, and they're going to appear in the bottom uh, left-hand corner of your screen. Uh, so if you uh, if you get lost uh, and you, you've kind of forgotten which stage we're at, then hopefully this can uh, this can bring you back. Uh, so from left to right, so question uh, means that we're kind of working through a question, like what question do we want to answer uh, of our data? Uh, the second one, which is uh, Sort of, sort of kind of like a, a download link is the idea of uh, we're looking for some data and then uh, it kind of encapsulates the fact that we download that and go and get that into NFJ. So I'm not going to go into all of those details, but that will be mean that we're looking at data. Uh, the third one uh, means that we're modeling, so we're doing some sort of modeling work and trying to work out well, how we're going to how we're going to design this new bit of data that we've got into our into our NFJ. And the last one is we're doing querying. Uh, and what you'll see as we go along, so I'll point them out which stage we're at uh, at the beginning, uh, and then and then I'll then I'll kind of stop doing that after a little while, and you can just refer to the uh, to which ones highlighted in the bottom left. Uh, and what you'll notice as we go through this is that you is that you move between the different stages. They're not necessarily a, a sequential process from left to right. Sometimes you'll uh, you'll start you might start on the left, move a bit to the right, and then you'll go back one step. Uh, perhaps you'll do a bit of modeling, and then you'll go back and query again. And, uh, and it's a bit of an iterative cycle. So hopefully that will come across. Uh, but let's start. So uh, the first thing uh, that you want to you're modeling uh, something is uh, actually what, what, do we, what do we actually want to what question are we trying to answer? So this could uh, this might be so in this case I came up with the question because uh, let's say I was the subject uh, matter expert for my for my own uh, meetup project. Uh, but perhaps this might actually need to be derived uh, from or collaborated with uh, from someone who, on the commercial side of the company or, or, or a business uh, person or, or in fact the subject matter expert. Uh, and so what we come up with here is just a simple way of describing what do we, uh, what question are we trying to answer. And so in this case we start with something simple uh, as you can see. So I'm a member of the Neo4j London group 
uh, and I want to find some other similar groups to, uh, so I can join those. And so perhaps there were some things in the Neo4j London group that I like, and I want to find some uh, some other ones. Uh, and so, yeah, so you can see here we're in the question stage, so we're right at the beginning. Uh, okay, so the next thing we need to do uh, is we need to find uh, some data to help us answer that question. And so these are a few, uh, so, so we've now moved into the data stage, uh, and these are a few uh, examples of what might make groups similar. So uh, as I mentioned before, each group uh, is able to choose, uh, I think they're allowed 15, 15 topics or tags of what they're about. Uh, so for example, on the left, uh, Neo4j groups about, uh, we have uh, data mining, we obviously have Neo4j, we have computer programming, database development. Uh, whereas if we move over uh, to the right hand side, uh, we have the extract meetup, which is about uh, cloud computing or big data and machine learning. And so uh, the idea is that these, these groups all individually pick their topics, but there's some uh, overlap between them. And we're going to use that uh, to help us do a content based uh, recommendation. Okay, so we've got so so we've got our data, we've got it into, uh, we've got it got it ready. Uh, but w what model are we going to to come up with? So uh, Neo4j uses something known as the uh, the labeled property uh, property graph, uh, and so we'll go through each of the pieces of that. But this is an example of what uh, a model might look like to help us answer that first question. So we wanted to try and find um, similar groups uh, based on topic. Uh, and so we've got some pieces of uh, terminology that, that we'll, we'll quickly refresh. Maybe these are already familiar to you, so, so uh, but in, in case they're not. Uh, so we start off, so it's circled in the red uh, are the nodes. Uh, and so you can, uh, you can see we're representing uh, groups and topics with those nodes. Um, and we, uh, the nodes are generally representing uh, the, the, the main bits of data in our, in our, data, in our, in our model. Uh, and so if you're uh, used to relational database, that might be a record uh, in a table. That could be a node. So in this case, we've got a group uh, and we've got topics. Um, the, the next bit, and this is what makes uh, Neo4j uh, interesting compared to other ways of representing data, is that we actually explain what is the way that the, those bits of data or those nodes are related to each other. And so we use uh, what, it, what are highlighted in red here, uh, are known as relationships. Uh, you might sometimes hear them refer to as edges, but the terminology that Neo uses is relationships. And you can see they have a name. So in this case, uh, both the relationships on this diagram are called has topic. Uh, and they also have a direction. Um, so in this case, the way you, could, you would read it is the group has topic and then there's a topic on the other side. And then uh, and we've also got labels. Um, so labels is the third, third bit of terminology to remember. And those are used for helping us to group our nodes. Uh, so in this case, uh, the nodes are the, we've got groups and we've got we've got topics, and you can apply that 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 label to the appropriate uh, to the appropriate nodes. Uh, labels are used to help us uh, to find where do we want to start our queries at, and so we'll see that uh, in a couple of slides time when we do our first query. Uh, and equally, you don't have to have have a label uh, if you if you know that you're never going to start a query from a particular node, or you're not uh, particularly interested in, uh, in naming it. Uh, and the final uh, bit of terminology is that we've got properties. So these are, these are now highlighted uh, in red. Um, on this model, uh, we've only got them on the nodes. So for example, on, on the group node, we've got uh, a name property. And these are key value uh, pairs that describe some metadata uh, about the nodes. Uh, you can also put them on relationships, although I don't have them on, on, on this particular part of the model. But uh, as we go through, hopefully you'll see, uh, you'll see that you can put them on there as well. Uh, okay, so this is the model that we're going to that we're going to uh, we're going to start with, and so once we've done that, we now want to convert this model, which is now down on the right-hand side, into a query uh, that finds similar topics to the uh, to the Neo4j London user group. So uh, the way to read this, so we start with a match clause up in the top left, and we'll read it from left to right. So what we're saying here is we're saying. Uh, I want you to match, and then you put supply a pattern, uh, and it will go and look in the graph and try and find uh, a part of the graph that matches that pattern. Uh, and what we're saying is we've got uh, a node uh, in the brackets, uh, and it's got the label group, so that's that's the, the colon group. Uh, and we'll get the, the other group, the, the lowercase group, is just a, a variable name or an identifier, so that we can refer to it elsewhere in the query if we wanted to. Uh, and we're saying, I want you specifically to go and find the, the group uh, which has the name property uh, Neo4j London user group. Uh, once you've done that, uh, go and find its topics. Uh, so that's the sort of following the has topic relationship from the Neo4j London user group. 
Uh, then once you get to once you've got to all those, uh, go and find other groups uh, that have got that uh, topic. And so hopefully you can see that what we've described here in text is very similar uh, to what we've got in the bottom right hand side. It's just that instead of topic two, topic uh, topic one, and group one, uh, we've we've now got uh, actual names of the data in our data set. Uh, and then once we've done that, uh, we try to come up with a way that we can order uh, these other groups that have come up. Uh, and the metric that I chose to order was, uh, let's find the group that has the most topics in common. So uh, so we, we return the other group's name, uh, and then we do a count of how many topics in common, and uh, we do a collect of, of their names. So this comes back with a list of topic names, uh, and then we're just ordering by which one has the most. Uh, and if we were to run that uh, in the F J, all this all this code is available uh, uh, on GitHub. Uh, I'll put a, there's a link on the last slide, and so you'll get that um, uh, tomorrow when Greta sends it out. Uh, if you want to give it a try, if we run that, uh, this is this is what we would uh, we would see with uh, with the London dataset. And so uh, it suggests to me uh, Python for quant finance, uh, and then uh, you can see that's got eight topics in common. Uh, we've got a whole load of ones down here which have got seven in common, uh, and then it will tell me. Uh, across the right on the right hand side, which uh, which topics uh, do those ones have in common with the Neo4j user group, uh, which I have uh, said I'm interested in, and therefore uh, these these other groups may be interesting as well. Uh, and although we haven't, we never actually said we're interested in databases. You can see on this list that there are a few that have come up. So we've got a Couchbase, we've got Postgres, we've got uh, Hadoop, which is also in the, in the data world, and then we've got the London NoSQL one. So they all they all have some some quite similar. Uh, Topics without necessarily anywhere saying, oh, these two, these groups are similar to each other. Uh, and so you can see here we've done we've kind of dealt, we kind of moved through the through the four stages. We started with our question, which is finally similar groups to the London one, London FJ one. We found some data to answer that question. Then we did a bit of modeling, uh, and now we've done a query. <coughs> uh, so the first tip. Um, so this is this is the other part of this of, of the structure. So we're going to go through these stages, and then we'll summarise each one with a with a tip on something that you can take away. Uh, and so what we've done here is we've, we're, we're building incrementally. So if you remember from the beginning, there were loads of potential uh, recommendations that we can make, lots of bits of data we could work with. I'm sure lots of ideas uh, that we would have had when we first looked at the data set, but we've just started with the first one. Uh, and so I find this is quite a useful. A thing to do when you're when you're uh, modeling, you don't need to come up with the design for everything uh, at the beginning. You can actually build this sort of stuff iteratively or incrementally. Uh, and so at the moment, we've just we've got quite a simple model. All we've got is topics uh, and groups. Uh, but it's helped us to answer the first question, so it's uh, so it's done its job so far. Uh, okay, let's move on. So uh, what I noticed after I so I did I did this I answered this question and then I was like, oh well, it's actually suggesting me uh, some groups that I'm already a member of. So this is not actually uh, the query is not actually very useful yet, so it's, it's quite cool. It showed me some stuff that I didn't, uh, didn't, I was, I didn't know about. So it showed me the uh, the Python for quant finance, which might be an interesting one for me to to go to, and then uh, a few others that, that could be good. Uh, but I'm already a member of the Postgres and the, the Hadoop one, so that's uh, that's not a good that's not a good uh, good recommendation. So how can we uh, solve that? Uh, so now we we realize, oh, okay, well our first query was okay, it worked quite well, but we we want to improve it. Uh, so we've, going, we've got to go and look for some more data to solve this problem. Uh, and in this case, um, uh, Meetup lets us get uh, your Meetups, so you have the ability to get the Meetups for a person, so that's what I've got on the left-hand side. Uh, and it also allows you to get your interests uh, on the right-hand side. So for the next query, we actually only need to know what Meetups we're a member of. So for example, you can see the ones that I'm a member of. I'm uh, in the NFJ London one, I'm in the Spark London, I'm in uh, I mean, Lego Serious Play as well. I didn't didn't know about that one, uh, and then a few others. Uh, and so now, what we're going to do is we're going to make use of that of that uh, knowledge as well. Uh, and so our query evolves a little bit. So it's now the first bit stays the same. So I'm still a member of the Neo4j London user group, uh, and I want to find other similar groups. But this time, I want to find ones that I'm not already a member of. Okay, so we're, so we're just iterating the question a little bit. And so we've got the data already. So at that time, we went data to question, uh, and now we're into the into the model. Uh, and we're just going to make a simple addition to the model down the uh, on the the, uh, the bottom left of this of this diagram. Uh, so we had this already. So we had group has topic and group has topic, and we're just going to add in here uh, another part of the model. So we're going to uh, add in a member of relationship. So a member, for example, could be could be you or I, uh, and we're going to have a mem uh, we're going to have a member of relationship pointing uh, to 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 one of the groups, or, or in fact many of the groups. Uh, okay. And now uh, we're going to ch ch change our query uh, a little bit to make 
use of that uh, of that information. And so what I've got highlighted here in uh, in the third uh, third field that comes back from the query uh, is we're making use of an of the exists function, uh, and then inside there we can pass in a pattern. Uh, so in, in, in this in this instance, the pattern is. Uh, can you find a node uh, which is uh, of type uh, or has the label member, uh, and that member should be Mark Needham. Obviously, if it was if it was you, you'd, you'd change uh, you'd change that to be your name. Uh, and I want you to check uh, whether Mark is a member of the other group. So this other group here is the one that we found in our first query, uh, which was one of the ones that we want to to suggest to the user. Uh, and then we're just going to get back a boolean true or false uh, saying whether I'm already a member. So let's have a look what what happens if we run that. Uh, okay, so now I've, so I've highlighted the ones which uh, where I where I am was where I am already a member, and uh, so you can see they come up. So the Hadoop group uh, comes up, the Postgres one comes up, the import IO comes up as well. Um, and so if we were building one of these queries in our in our Meetup application, it's not very interesting to go and suggest something that I'm already a member of. So we'd want to filter those. Uh, so this first query shows well, which ones do we want to filter. Uh, so we're still in query mode, uh, and now we can tweak the query a bit. So we've just kind of gone query, have a look at the results, go back to the query again, and then all we do is we move that pattern from the exists part of the, uh, which was in the third third um, <coughs> third field returned, and we move it up into a where not. Uh, so when you're when you're matching a pattern, you can tell it um, to filter out uh, parts of the graph based on a condition. So in this case, we're saying find me the other groups that have matching topics, but uh, if Mark's already a member, or if someone's already a member, uh, then I don't want to show it at all. So we're going we're to strip it out. So that's what the where not uh, will do. Uh, and if we run that, we then get back uh, something that looks like this. Uh, and so now you can see that the Hadoop group uh, has gone, and the import IO group has gone, uh, and the Postgres one's gone, and all we're left with is potentially new groups, which are similar in terms of uh, the content that they advertise to the to the new J group. Uh, so that's a good start. So we've got our first query, and we've uh, it probably wouldn't wouldn't take us too long to do that. We've had to import topics, um, groups, uh, and then we've got uh, the member of relationship to. Uh, and then we've got members, and then we've got the link between members uh, and the groups. Okay, so that's our, that's our opening. Um, but the next thing we might you you remember I I jumped a bit ahead of myself and put in a bit of extra data uh, about five or six slides ago which had uh, interests uh, and so that would probably be quite an interesting thing to do so we don't want to uh, always be uh, focusing on the on the near for J group we might want to actually now put to pull our query back a bit and go well actually can we can we write this query from the perspective uh, of an actual user of Meetup uh, so this time what we're going to do so you can see here we changed the query a little bit so we're going to say uh, as a member of, of multiple uh, meetup groups, uh, I want to find other similar groups uh, that I'm not already a member of, so that I can join those groups. And so this time, uh, so we've got, so we, you know, probably remember most of this diagram. So we've got a group has a topic, uh, and then a member is a member of a group, and then all what we've added in is this bit here that's interested in, uh, and we're going to add in the interests that he, that a user uh, expresses. The, I think they actually have, you have to actually uh, specify it when you. Uh, when you register for an account, uh, but you can also go and update it, obviously, as your as your interests change. Uh, and so we can then tweak our query a little bit. So instead of starting from the Neo4j user group as we did on the previous ones, we're now starting from uh, from me. Uh, but it reads reasonably similarly. So we'll go through it from the top. So uh, we want to start from this time from Mark. So find me a node uh, that has the label member, name it member. Find the uh, uh, follow the interested in relationship to find uh, some topics. Find the uh, groups that have those topics. So that's this bit on the end of the second line. And then uh, check that marks a member of those groups. So then we get back uh, all the topics that I'm interested in, and we kind of get a score for those topics. So if I'm uh, in uh, groups which have, uh, let's say, NoSQL uh, appearing a lot of times, then NoSQL will, 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 will get pushed up on the uh, on, on the rankings, and then once we've got that, we kind of collect it. So we say, okay, for Mark, uh, for this topic, uh, this is the score that we've got so far. Uh, then we're going to go uh, and look for other groups that have the topics. So that's quite similar as what we did on the other query, the previous one. Uh, and we're going to make sure that Mark's not already a member of that uh, group as well. Uh, and then once we've got that, uh, we're going to return the group, and again, we're going to we're going to we're going to uh, get the topics uh, that are of interest, and we're going to do uh, some scoring. And if we run that one, um, 
we get a slightly different result. So instead of uh, Python for Quant Finance coming up, so Python for Quant Finance was similar to the Neo4j group, uh, but for me uh, in particular, uh, I think I, I think if I remember right, I'm a member. Of, I've uh, I've tagged myself with a lot of uh, data-related topics, and so those get pushed right to the top. So you can see uh, all the suggestions. Uh, at least the top five or six all have something data in the names. So we've got data science, business analytics, we've got data science lab, a big data week, uh, and so on. And then we get uh, this score. Probably you wouldn't bother uh, displaying it. It's just a way of uh, sorting these in, in some way. Um, and actually, it doesn't help. It doesn't actually help to distinguish some of the top ones because they all have um, this, exactly the same topic. So in, in that case, if we were if we were building the next part of this query, we'd probably want to try and find a way of, is there another way that we can uh, that we can make these uh, recommendations a bit more specific? Um, but that's how we could do that. That's the next, sort of our next iteration of the query. So we found some similar groups. Uh, what I then noticed is that uh, when I try to run it for one of my uh, my colleagues, uh, who's called uh, Johnny, uh, and he's a, me he's a member of some groups, uh, I ran the query uh, and didn't get any rows. And it's like, oh, well, that's <laughs> that's no good. I can't make any recommendations to Johnny. Uh, so I was trying to work out what's uh, what's happened here. Uh, so I ran, a, I wrote a, an, another query just to have a look. To, has Johnny expressed any interest in uh, in some topics? And actually, he hasn't. Uh, and the reason for that is that you don't actually have to express them, and you can choose to hide them from the API. And so, uh, in this case, we don't have anything for Johnny, uh, which is a bit which is a bit annoying. So we now, we now we can't make any suggestions for Johnny for. Uh, potential groups, uh, but luckily, uh, because of the other data that we've uh, that we've got, we can probably actually infer uh, Johnny's interests. Uh, so you remember that we had the we've got the we've got the memberships and the members of the groups, and then the groups have the topics, and so we can make a reasonable assumption that if Johnny's joined some groups, uh, then perhaps uh, there are uh, we can infer that he's interested in those topics. And so what we're going to do uh, is where we've got this red uh, interested in. Uh, we're going to actually make this potential interested in relationship that Johnny implicitly has. Uh, we're going to make it uh, explicit in the graph so that we can uh, we can we can run our uh, uh, similarity query and find some groups for Johnny. So what we're going to do, uh, so you can kind of see the process that we're going to do. Uh, so we've got on the left hand side we've got uh, we've got the member off in the topic, and we're going to change that dotted line, which is kind of the implicit interest in the topic, and we're going to make it explicit. Uh, this is quite this is quite interesting because this is this is sometimes something that you can often often do in a graph. Uh, uh, you can actually go and work out is there is there a relationship that hasn't ever actually been specified uh, by the person. Uh, uh, and as we'll see as we go on, uh, there's, there's trade-offs to, to to doing this, which you which you have to decide whether or not uh, something that you want to do. But in this case, I think it's it's actually uh, it works quite well. Uh, but let's have a look how we're going to create that uh, interested in relationship first. Um, so the way we're going to do it is we're going to write uh, a cipher query, uh, and so here this query that's on the screen now actually goes and uh, goes and work uh, goes and works out those uh, actually cheats a little bit uh, and makes use of RSVPs which we haven't actually put in yet. Um, but what we what we would do is go and work out well are that can we actually work out what interests Johnny has? So we're going to go and have a look uh, and say imagine that instead of RSVP we can tr check the group. Uh, we're going to have a look for the groups. Uh, let's count uh, how many of them uh, have uh, Johnny as a, in this case, and how many uh, events has Johnny attended more than five times uh, for a topic. Uh, and if he's if he's been to that many events, then perhaps that indicates uh, an interest. And we're going to use the merge keyword. So the merge keyword uh, uh, allows you to create something uh, in the graph uh, if it doesn't already exist. Although if it does exist, then it will just uh, return it. Uh, so in this case, what we're doing is we're creating a relationship uh, called interested in between uh, Johnny uh, and the topics uh, for events that he's been to. And if we if we run that query over the graph, uh, then uh, it allows us to make uh, a meetup a group recommendation to Johnny. And you can see he's he's quite similar to me. He's got he, he also goes to to to, to data related meetups, although he's uh, he's got some ones that I don't recognise as well. So he's got the uh, he's got more uh, BI uh, stuff, so I, I know he's been to a few meetups that are quite similar to that in other groups. So perhaps that's why that one's showing up. And he's got a bit of advanced data visualization as well, a bit of entrepreneurship. Um, and if we tried this with a user who perhaps has a completely different interest uh, to either of us, then we'd see uh, some completely different groups being suggested. Uh, but the idea here was 
but we can make the implicit explicit. So we're, we're effectively what we're doing is we there was a there was a link, uh, a missing link, and we filled it in. Um, and a, now a common question uh, with doing this type of thing is that, well, how do I how do I keep that uh, relationship up to date? And so what you could do with this, uh, what you would probably do with this is maybe you run it once a day because it's it's unlikely that you change uh, the groups uh, that you go to very often. Uh, you you are people often join maybe maybe once a month a, a new group so it's not like this part of the the interest is going to change very often and even if they went to uh, let's say they go to one event a day uh, we could easily run the query at the end of the day and then and then be able to use the output the next day um, one thing I I didn't cover in here is that if we if we were doing it on a bigger graph perhaps with uh, million hundred uh, tens of millions of nodes we probably want to do this in batches so we we take like say 10,000 users at a time and updates uh, and update them. Uh, I had, I think I've got about 80,000 users and it took about 20 seconds to, to run this for, the, for everyone. Um, so yeah, so that's the idea. So times it makes sense to go and fill in that missing that missing link in the graph. So it's, it's always a useful trick to have, uh, but maybe you, maybe you don't always need to, to use it, but in this case I think it works quite well. Uh, so the next query that I wanted to do was, I was really curious whether we could um, whether there was some pattern to what groups people join next, so quite similar to um, to how LinkedIn, uh, when you go to a company page, will tell you uh, people who worked at this company when they left, uh, these were the companies they were most likely to join, uh, or people who joined this company, the ones that they were most likely in previously, this is where they were. Uh, and so you can potentially come up with some interesting uh, interesting insights from doing that. So I thought, ah, oh, I wonder if there's anything uh, in the meetup uh, graph that uh, looks like that. Uh, so what I wanted to do was, uh, as a member of the meter group, uh, I want to find out which uh, groups people join after this one, uh, and perhaps I want to join those groups uh, as well. Uh, and so we can actually work that out uh, with all, with the data that we've already got. So we've got everything that we need to do this. Um, although the way that we do it in this uh, in this particular query doesn't really make uh, a lot of use of the uh, of the I suppose off the benefits of, of, of modeling the data as a graph, so but we'll go through it and then hopefully you'll be able to see that. Um, so what we're doing here, so we're saying I want to find, uh, so I've got Neo4j uh, group first, uh, so find the Neo4j group, find the people who are members of that, find the other groups that they're members of, so we've kind of got lots of, uh, lots of people, not lots of Neo4j user group members and lots of their memberships with other groups, um, and then we're going to order the, we're going to make sure that they joined the Neo4j one first. Uh, so we're going to filter out. So if they joined the Neo4j one after a, a whole load of other groups, then we don't, we don't, we're not interested in those for this group, so we'll get rid of those. So that's what the where does. Uh, then on the next bit, we're going to do some ordering, uh, and it will become clear why we do that in the next step. So we're going to order uh, each of the members and the other group they joined uh, by the join date. Uh, and remember, these all these join dates are after the time they joined the Neo4j user group. Uh, and then for the next step, uh, we're going to we're going to just we're going to group so collect grabs all those groups together, those other groups, and then we're just going to take the first one. So that's what this zero is doing. So it's, there's a collection of other groups for each member. Uh, we're just going to grab the first one. Uh, and actually, what this means, because we did the ordering on the previous line, that's the next group they joined. Uh, so we come down. We did a query, of quite a big query at the beginning, uh, and then we did uh, we come down some filtering and aggregation to work out what the next group is, uh, and then we can return it. Uh, Back and it, or we can work out how many how many people uh, join that group next. So if I do that for the near for J London group, uh, what we'll get uh, looks like this at the time that I ran it. Uh, so people go to the data science London group, so 65 uh, people. Uh, we've got the Cassandra group, got London Java community, uh, and so you can see these are all these are all a lot of these are data uh, data uh, database user groups. There's some uh, that are a bit about web development, uh, and there's a Docker one down here. Uh, as well, um, and probably what you could do if you were trying to trying to come up with a scoring for this would be well, okay, so 65 people join the data science group uh, out of how many? Uh, so in this case, there are 2,000 members, so it's not it's not like uh, every single person uh, joins that one next. Uh, but perhaps we could also say, well, does this change over time? Are people uh, joining uh, joining a different group now than they were six months ago? Uh, we perhaps could go and work that up. Uh, but the reason that I put this one in uh, as a, as one that I thought was interesting is that the query works, but it feels quite clunky. Uh, if you've uh, once you've done a bit of graph modeling, it doesn't feel like we're really uh, making use of it. Uh, and actually, what becomes what becomes uh, 
clear is that perhaps we're missing uh, we're missing a concept in our domain, and that, that concept uh, is the membership. So the membership is kind of hidden away in the uh, in the member of relationship, but perhaps we could, we want to make it uh, a node. Um, and this is a pattern that often that can often come up if you find yourself like trying to really wrestle with the with the query to get it to work. Perhaps uh, perhaps you're missing a concept. Uh, and so the general pattern that you can apply is that facts uh, in your domain can often become nodes. So uh, the, the relationship between a member and a group uh, is a fact. So there's a membership or a member off in this case. Uh, and what we could do is we could, might choose to refactor our uh, our model uh, so that we can explicitly call that out. And uh, so instead of having a member member off relationship, uh, perhaps what we have instead uh, is we create a relationship, uh, create a new node called a membership. Uh, so for example, member has a membership uh, and the memberships of a group, and perhaps you then have another membership of another group. Uh, and we could even add in uh, other metadata about that membership uh, as well. So perhaps we put the start and end date uh, so that you could join, you could be members multiple times. Um, uh, and then what, so this is, this is how we would do it. So imagine we, we created that member off uh, the, initially we created the member off uh, relationship and now we want to create uh, make a node out of that so what we could do so we'll go over the graph we'll find uh, all the member off relationships uh, then we're going to create a membership uh, node uh, and I thought we'll just use an ID which is the combination of a member uh, and a group because uh, that's going to be unique uh, we'll then put the join date on there and we'll merge the uh, we'll merge that new membership node in uh, to the member, uh, and we'll also connect it to the group. So this is us uh, creating that 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 extra part of the uh, the graph down here. Uh, and so the next thing that we that we need to do uh, is we want to put uh, a relationship between the memberships. So you remember before we were kind of scanning through all of the member offs and doing a bit of ordering on the join date and taking the first one. But what we're going to do in this model is we're going to put in a next relationship between uh, adjacent memberships. So for example, if I joined the NFJ uh, group, uh, I'd have a membership for that. And then if I, if the next one I joined was the uh, Data Science London group, I'd have a, a node for that membership and then I'd connect them together. So it's kind of building like a, uh, like a time-based relation between uh, our uh, memberships. Uh, so you don't need to, to, to understand this whole query, it's just a, a way of uh, connecting adjacent things. Uh, and you can, can read that when you get the slides tomorrow. Um, but what that allows us to do uh, is that we can now use it to, to write, rewrite our find the next group query. Uh, so if we go through it again, so this time we're saying, uh, start from the London uh, user group, uh, I'm going to find uh, all the memberships of that group, so uh, membership of London user group, uh, and then I'm going to find the next one, so find the next membership, uh, and then I'm going to find the member who has that membership and make sure that they also have the next membership uh, and make sure that they're that it's for this group. Uh, so we're kind of just sort of um, in English we are find the uh, find the, the next uh, membership that people have uh, and then find the group uh, that it's for uh, and then what we're doing is we're counting it up again uh, and we end up with the same result. That's, so those queries are now uh, are equivalent. So if we uh, put them side by side. And what we had originally was we had member, member of group uh, at the top, and this was what the query looked like. Uh, so we were doing a little bit of aggregation and counting in here. Uh, and now we've got, uh, and so what you'll notice is this is, this is a much more complex model, uh, the one with the memberships in. So we've got, uh, two, we've got two relationships here instead of one, and we've added in the node, and then we've got a relationship there. So it's a much more complex model, so it would take up uh, more space if you chose to go with this model. Uh, but we've been able to simplify the query a bit uh, and it's also it's also kind of making use of the of the graph model more than the previous one. Uh, but more importantly, um, and what you'll often do while you're while you're modeling is actually that you want to know well is this which one's faster? Uh, how do I know if this if this model is actually uh, going to work once I put some data in, uh, some real data in even? Uh, and there are there are ways uh, that you can profile your query. So there are two ways. Uh, so you can either uh, profile it. So this is the most, I guess, this is, this is the more common one. So this is where you run the query and you uh, and you get a query plan at the same time, uh, having run it. But, or you can <coughs> use the explain function, which will uh, come up with the plan without <coughs> without actually executing it. Uh, so in this case, we're in the in the following examples, we're going to we're going to show what happens when you profile a query. Now, 
this, uh, so the diagram that follows, uh, is the longest plan I've seen so far, so I wouldn't recommend this as necessarily something to aspire to, but uh, just something that you can see, the complexity that's, uh, that you can, uh, you can manage to create. So this is the top, this is part two, uh, and this is part three, so you can see it's quite, <laughs> quite complicated. Uh, so this is the sort of thing that you'll get when you, uh, when you run the profile, but hopefully your ones, your ones are a bit smaller than that. Uh, and so what we get, one of the things we get, uh, one of the bits of information that we'll get on that query plan uh, is something known as the DB hits. <coughs> and our goal uh, when we're writing, uh, or one of our goals when we're writing these queries is can we get that number down? Um, and so that, sort of kind of obvious next question is, well, what is a database hit? Uh, and so this is an app, this is the uh, best way of describing it is it's a, it's a bit of storage engine work, and it doesn't. It, it just takes into account work that the database is doing. So it doesn't take into account if, it, if a bit of data is cached, that doesn't make a difference to the DB hits. If it had to go and fetch it from disk, that doesn't make a difference to the DB hits. So this is just a this is an abstraction on top of a work done. Um, and so if we run our two queries, so those two queries to find the next memberships, uh, and we run them with both models. So at the moment we've got both models in in the in the database. Uh, the first one uh, takes uh, about 330 milliseconds to run uh, using uh, uh, near for two, I think it was near for two, 2 2.3.1, uh, and the number of DB hits is uh, 100, uh, 111,000. And the refactored model, uh, so the one on the bottom, uh, takes 23,000. So five times <coughs> it covers five times less ground. And the reason for that uh, is because every time we go to look at, a, at the next membership on the top model, we have to scan through all the memberships that a user has and then order them and then find the next one. Uh, so if, if, you're, if somebody's a member of lots of different groups, we're kind of looking at lots of redundant information, whereas on the second one, uh, we literally just go, we just find the Neo4j one uh, and then we look at the next one. So we only ever look at two. Uh, so that's the reason we're able to get this, uh, this number of DB hits down. Uh, so so just the, the tip here is uh, when you're when you're sort of playing around with these models, spike out different models, uh, and obviously again drive it from the query that you actually want to answer. Uh, and it may well be that that, uh, that you have to decide. Well, okay, this one's uh, a lot sort of like it's a, it's a bit more complex. It's harder to write queries, uh, and it's marginally faster. Uh, so maybe we'll just go with the, we'll just go with the simpler one and uh, and save ourselves a bit of time when we're when we're reading and writing the query. Uh, but it could equally be that actually speed is the most important thing, and we're going to accept that we have this uh, slightly more complex model. Um, but what it leads us to is this is what we've got at the moment. So we've actually got two ways of representing the same thing, uh, and it might be that we decide to keep it. Uh, but as you probably realise, there is a, there is a disadvantage to doing this, which is that we've got to keep it in our in sync ourselves. So we'd have to do this from the application. There's no way at the moment for the database to enforce the the fact that member off and the combination of has membership and off group actually uh, refer to the same to refer to a domain invariant that we want to uh, ensure. Uh, so I thought it would be interesting to have a look. Well, what does that actually mean? What does keeping these things in sync mean? Uh, so what it means is that if we wanted, for example, to add in, uh, let's say I've got a new membership, uh, we've got to add it twice. So we've got so imagine we're at the top of the top of the page, we get in a new member, and we get in a group, um, and we want to add a, a add a membership in, so we've got to go and look up the groups, uh, we've got to create that member off uh, relationship. Now if, if that was all we had to do, if we were just keeping the member off model, we've just got to do this top bit and then we're done. But since we've at the moment got both of them in, we've got to then do this second step. So we've got to go and create the membership and create the has membership relationship and create the has group, uh, uh, the off group uh, relationship as well. So we've got, we've got a little bit of extra work in there. Uh, if we wanted to remove a group, same similar sort of deal. So uh, if we were just wanting to delete it in the in the member off model, we'd just do this bit. Again, equivalently, if we if we only had the membership model, we could just delete that bit. Uh, but if we've got to do both, we've got uh, we've got more work to do. So we you can kind of see. So we've got to do uh, one match, two matches, uh, three, four, five, six, uh, and then we've got to delete everything. Uh, so we add we add some write load. So you'd have to you'd have to you'd have to be having a, uh, doing some performance uh, profiling on that as well to make to, to decide whether that makes sense. But I mean, it kind of set, well, given that given our current uh, profiling, we've used the profiler, uh, and we're like, oh, cool, yeah, we we don't need that that member off relationship anymore. It's not really it doesn't the has membership one was uh, was faster. Uh, but if you remember back, uh, so remember back to our original uh, query uh, where we were trying to find uh, similar groups that we're not already a member of, so not taking into account the order. 
Um, if we compare, if we write lo both of those queries and profile those, uh, we actually get a very different picture. So it's actually now the other way around. So the uh, the one with the, the simpler model uh, actually uh, performs better. Uh, so it's actually again, and it's again on a, on a magnet uh, five uh, times magnitude. And the reason here is because we're actually having to evaluate in, on that query uh, to find the similar groups. We just have to follow member off, get to the group, compare them. Now we've got to go as membership. Okay, cool. Of a group. Okay, uh, and we, and then follow the topic from there. So we've got some extra steps, uh, some extra work to do, uh, and and again to work out the groups that we're already a member of. We've got to go and check uh, a much more complicated pattern than before. Uh, so actually, both models are good for a for a different uh, different question. Uh, and so you have to decide because uh, uh, different models uh, work work better for some queries, but work worse for others. So we've got to decide: well, do we accept having both models and and then pay the right and maintenance penalty, uh, or do we pick one and just accept that some of our queries are going to be a bit a bit more difficult to write uh, and read? Uh, so that's that that section. Uh, but what about events? Let's have a look. Let's have a quick let's have a quick race through uh, events and see what can we do there. So this is uh, an example from my uh, from my homepage uh, late last year, and it was suggesting some meetups for me to go to. Uh, and so we're going to do the similar similar sort of pattern. So it's always the same. It's start with the question uh, and then work through it. So this time, uh, I'm a member of several groups. Uh, I've been to some events. Uh, I like those events, so I want you to show me some uh, other events by those groups, so I can go to those as well. Uh, so we're going to so we're going to add to our model. So what we've got here, so you can see, we, remember we had the member off. You'll be familiar with already. Um, the RS, uh, what we've added in, so I actually cheated a bit and used this about 10 slides ago, uh, but we've got an RSVP relationship, and as you can see, we've got a property on that. So we've got a, a response property, which can either be yes, no, or waiting list, uh, and we've, 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 got, we've got our event, which we've got a timestamp on, uh, and a group can host events, uh, and that should be enough information to help us answer this question. Uh, so let's do that. So what we're doing here is we're trying to find uh, events in... Uh, groups that I'm a member of uh, and return those. So we're looking for Mark, um, find the gr groups that Mark's in, find a uh, future, find, so I've called this future event, but what makes it a future event is the fact that we compare the timestamp on the next line. So saying from Mark, find his groups, find future events for those groups, uh, and make sure Mark's not already going to it. Uh, if I'm already going to it, that's not a very interesting thing to show. And then this one day thing at the top was just a bit of a just a bit of a way of uh, showing the number of days. I think in a, in a real application you would you would do that could probably do that calculation in in, in your app uh, rather than doing it in Cipher, but just for the sake of this uh, uh, making this look a bit nicer, I thought uh, instead of showing it in milliseconds, it would be nicer to show it in uh, in days. Uh, and so what I get back if I was being suggested some meetups for the coming week, uh, this these are ones in my groups. So I get back. Uh, some suggestions, so you can see there's a. It knows me well. Uh, there's a suggestion for uh, for some uh, for some NFJ modeling, and then there's some other stuff, a bit of JavaScript. So see, this was a this was a, a pre-Christmas query, so I've got a suggestion to go to a, a Christmas cracker, uh, and then there's a few other ones on there as well. And then what we might want to add on, so we might like build, might choose to then build the the next part of this query might be well, actually, let's take into account the previous events I've attended as well. Uh, and weight uh, the score in favor uh, and, and show that as well. So if I've if I've been to events for a group, that's cool. That's let, let me know about that so I can uh, so I can take that into account. And so what we're doing here is we're adding in. Uh, so I've just, there are actually a couple of other things on here as well. Uh, so we've used another exists um, to uh, to check if I'm a member of the group. Uh, so we're now kind of suggesting lots of events and and then we're kind of giving me the information saying yeah, there's some events coming up. Uh, by the way, here's some information about your relationship to those events. Uh, either I'm a member of the group, uh, or in this 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 bit that's currently highlighted, uh, have I been to some previous events uh, from that group? Uh, so this is our evolution of the query. Might look like this. So now uh, it will show me. It puts the near for J one at the top, uh, and it says, "Hey, you've been to 94 uh, events for that group." Uh, so you can see that I've got quite uh, diverse uh, interests. Uh, and I've only been to one. I've only been to one event from any of these uh, these other groups, and I'm a, mem I'm a member of a few of them. Uh, and so while I, while I was doing this, I was like, I was quite curious. So you you notice that we've modelled RSVP'd uh, as our, uh, with a property on it, and I was curious whether 
refactoring that to be uh, RSVP'd yes uh, would have any impact because the way that NeoFJ uh, queries is very is heavily optimized for querying by unique relationship types. Uh, and so if if I've got lots of RSVPs with a mix of different responses, so some yes, some no, uh, some waiting list, and what I'm really interested in is finding the yes ones, it, it, it would be quicker uh, if I named those uh, relationships like uh, very specifically. So again, we're gonna we're gonna do a bit of uh, we're gonna do a bit of refactoring on the model, the same as what we did uh, earlier on with the membership. Uh, and what we're going to do uh, is we're going to convert everything where there's an RSVP uh, with a response of yes, uh, in, and we're going to add in another relationship called RSVP yes, and we're going to do the same thing for RSVP no. Uh, I haven't put in waiting list on here, but you could do the same thing for that. Uh, and then I followed uh, followed the same pattern, so we're kind of comparing the models with the query profiler uh, for that previous query, for the one that we just did now to make uh, suggestions for uh, events that I might attend. Uh, and in this case, it actually it's only it's only a little bit faster. So we get get a marginal, it's probably about ninety thousand uh, database hits here. Um, and the reason for that is because we're not evaluating all the RSVP nos uh, and waiting lists anymore. Uh, but the gain here is not as much as it was for the uh, for the membership queries earlier on. Uh, but it then does, but it is it is a bit faster. So what's the what's the advantage of uh, keeping RSVP? Uh, and so the actual the reason would be well imagine that we're showing the profile page uh, of a person and we wanted to list uh, all the different uh, events they've been to uh, and we wanted to show the ones they'd answered yes to the ones they'd done no to and the ones that they've been put on the waiting list uh, and so what what we might we might write if we keep RSVP we could write this query it's quite simple it's just go find the member find all the RSVPs for the events uh, and list the events in the groups if we'd gone for the second model uh, we might end up, we'll end up with something a bit more complicated. So we've got to list each of the individual ones. We've got to get RSVP underscore yes, RSVP underscore no, RSVP underscore waiting list, uh, and then we can return that. Um, and so again, we've got to decide. Maybe we, maybe we go with the, maybe we go with the RSVP and we just put that, uh, uh, and we accept that it might be a little bit slow for some queries because again, it, we, we've got the, oh, do we, do we have both of them, or do we go with the do we go with the more specific one again? It's, you've got to, you've got to trade off what makes uh, what makes sense for your domain. Uh, and so to wrap up uh, with the with this talk, I've got one uh, one final query for you. Um, so what you find when you when you're playing with this data set is you'll uh, and as you go to meetup events uh, wherever you are, uh, is you'll start to get you realise that you're actually meeting the same people uh, in in quite a few of them. And so I was wondering, I was curious whether or not we could actually we could actually model this in the graphs. So it's not actually it's not actually something that uh, Meetup expose. So they allow you to find uh, Twitter followers and Facebook friends, but they uh, they don't have a concept of well, are, how are people similar to each other? Do they potentially know each other from having gone to the same events? Uh, and so what we're going to say here is well, if two people went to the same uh, event, uh, we're going to then work out well if they go to enough of those similar events, we're going to make we're going to say they're friends with each other. Uh, so this is the query. Again, you don't need to understand this. It was kind of working, just making a, a sort of made-up algorithm to say uh, if you've been uh, to more than five events that another person has been to, then we're going to say that you know each other, and then we're going to create a score based on the likelihood that you met. Uh, we're going to build that in. Uh, and one thing you might notice here, or perhaps not, uh, is that we didn't put a relationship on this merge. Uh, so we did it. We just put merge person one to person two. Uh, I'm not going to go through this query uh, in detail. Uh, you can you can read it afterwards. But effectively, we're just looking for we're going through every member against each other and finding what people who went to the same events, and then we're creating a relationship between them. Uh, and so, in, in this case, this is the first relationship we've got in our data set where actually there isn't really a direction because uh, if in, in this case, if I know you or I'm friends with you, uh, then you're friends with me as well. That's the way that we've uh, that we've modelled it in this domain. Uh, but Neo4j always always has a direction. So the way it stores data always has a direction between uh, between the, for the relationship. And so what we have to have to do uh, is really is actually take care of that in our application uh, and ignore it when we do our when we query. And so if we add that in, uh, we can now bring in our friends into the query. So this is the so mostly ignore this bit, just the highlighted bits. What's interesting. Uh, so we're adding in. Okay, if you found me some events, uh, are any of my friends going to these? And can you tell me? Can you tell me that uh, in the result uh, listing? Uh, and so what we can, what we get here is, for example, on this modeling uh, query, uh, result that comes top, 
Uh, so now I've got 94 events. By the way, I've also added in uh, added in uh, how many topics that group has in common, and I've also added in uh, friends who are going. And what might be interesting in this particular query is actually to to list those friends um, uh, so that I could see. Oh, maybe there's maybe there's a particular person that I want to meet. Uh, and so the idea here is that. Uh, some, some relationships are bidirectional. Uh, Neo4j stores them in the direction, but we can choose to ignore that. Uh, and again, we've inferred that friends relationship. So again, uh, we've gone and found a missing link that perhaps that the uh, uh, that wasn't in uh, Meetup's database, but we actually know from having from our analysis of the data. Uh, and so with that, uh, I'll just do a quick uh, quick wrap up in case you didn't uh, grab all the points. So across across the uh, this uh, this example of, of modeling a, a data set in NFJ uh, as a graph. Uh, so we, we've modeled incrementally all the way through. So hopefully you've been able to see that. So we started off with loads of potential ideas of stuff to do. And then we worked through the one by one. So we kind of went, we started off with the groups, uh, then we built that out, then we added in the membership, and then we built in the RSVPs, uh, and then we built in the friendships uh, as we went along. So we were always building incrementally and answering the next uh, question uh, that we wanted to answer. And so I've actually been building an application that does this alongside it, and so you can kind of see, you can kind of start with a page, and you go, okay, well, what can we add to this page now? Okay, cool, we can put in uh, just some uh, group suggestions. Oh, okay, can we make that a bit better? Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. If we if we take into account this other bit of information, we can uh, we can make the query a bit better. And so you can just keep on doing that. And although this is a meetup domain, you can do the same with whatever uh, your domain is. Uh, the second thing is, I'd always always look to profile your queries to check. Uh, to check what's actually going on under, under the hood, so you can actually be aware. I think uh, knowing what the what the query engine uh, is doing and 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 modeling up kind of go hand in hand, because uh, as you, as you've seen from some of the examples, altering the model a bit can actually make your queries go much faster. Uh, but equally, you've got to try, uh, as the next one suggests. Uh, next one suggests uh, you've got there's a maintenance cost for, for some of these tips. Um, and so you've got to decide that, especially when you're trying to work out whether to make a relationship explicit. Uh, is it worth the maintenance cost of doing that? Does it does it allow us to answer the question that we can't do very easily uh, without that? Uh, and just be aware of the trade-off that you're making. Uh, wherever possible, make relationship types as uh, specific as you can. Um, uh, so this is a this I think this takes a reasonable idea of how specific uh, you want to go. So you don't want to go too specific, otherwise you don't find uh, otherwise uh, you don't find any things which have the same relationship type. Uh, but equally, you don't want to go too verbose. So, for example, we don't want to just use the the the, the word uh, "directed" everywhere uh, or "has" everywhere, because that's not going to be uh, that's not going to really be using the, the the advantage of searching by unique relationship types. Uh, and then we finished up, but uh, by looking at how do we handle uh, bidirectional relationships. Uh, and so they, they, these are these are just five these are just five tips that I that I came across uh, uh, while um, looking at this data set. Uh, obviously, there, there, there are probably some other ones. If you if you look at other data sets, if you have any particular questions, uh, obviously write them in the chat. But uh, that's all I've got. And if you want to go and uh, have a look at this data set and actually see that, see some other queries that I wrote on it, uh, it's available uh, on our Neo4j meetups uh, GitHub.